Brad the Bird. Yeah! Blair! Wait, did you hear that? Did you feel that? Was that a door slam? Is there nowhere left to run? Is that a cold hand? Did you just close your eyes and hope this was just imagination? Did you try to scream? But terror took the sound before you made it. It is now the time for you and I to huddle close together all through the night because you're paralyzed, because horror looked you right between the eyes. Too late, you're out of time, because this is October. <laughs> and the days are getting shorter, the air is getting colder as the asthmatics wander out into the night because everything's dying so they can breathe. It's crispy, it's creepy, and if it didn't clue you in, seeing skeletons climbing the walls of the rich houses in the burbs, mid-riff witches are riding the red line, and Kyle didn't put in any effort, just walking around with a post-it on his chest says, this is my costume. Fuck you, Kyle. Get into the spirit before it gets into you, because no mere mortal can resist the ghost wonderful time of the yeah! That's right, my little ghouligans, it's finally Halloween! And damn, as scary as things are right now, if we haven't been craving a chance to be scarier than they are so we don't have to worry, and you've been doing it for a long time. Speaking of cravings, what's your candy hierarchy? Mine goes like this, bunch of crunch, almond joy, Milky Way, Twix, and the true king of Halloween, full-size Snickers. Fuck your Sour Patch Kids. Get out of here, psycho. We're too stressed for soft shit. In fact, if it's got chocolate-covered goo and nuts, it's going in the pumpkin bucket. Disagree all you want because I know you have opinions. Of course you do. You've been nomming on chalky treats since you started walking humans. Your ancient civilizations got you out of them and out of necessity because they did not yet have the Yeti 42-ounce Rambler straw mug bigger than a toddler for you to carry around like you're the Hulk's personal assistant and he needs his diet Dr. Pepper cold because you will not like him when he is angry. So you use sugar and honey to preserve food around the autumn times. It's no surprise your DNA is craving sweet eats around this time of year. Plus, you have an innate desire to pack on some poundage before winter. All warm-blooded creatures do. It's survival. It's natural. And getting your treat on is an easy way to survive the winter. But we have the candy industry to thank for furthering the diabetes. Back in 1916... Christmas and Easter were the hot times for indulging in your biological cravings for Wonka delights. But money's money, so they wanted another day. So they came up with a second Saturday in October when kids were already pissing everyone off because back then, the most fun thing to do was annoy people. Sweetest Day was invented in 1950, and when moms in the 60s figured out they didn't have to bake the entire fucking neighborhood a Halloween cake and just give out store-bought delights, bam! That's why you gotta uh, buy a variety sack the size of a bag of yard clippings from Walgreens this time of year for the kids or the neighborhood will set fire to your garage. And it's also why you crave it. The hallmark of any holiday season is hallmark. <laughs> and the scariest part of Halloween is commerce! And that's not a jump scare. Halloween has been the fastest growing consumer holiday. In 2023, consumers spent $3.6 billion on candy, $3.9 billion on decorations, and a record $4.1 billion on costumes. But why? That all started in Ireland and Scotland when mumming and guising was a whole religious deal for the kids because ghosts. In the late 19th century, Immigrants brought the tradition to America, and as far back as 1911, there's widespread stories about kids guising in the streets, and because it was kind of cool, they were rewarded with nuts and candies and mad press. The earliest known print of the term trick-or-treat appeared in 1934 in the Oregon Journal. The headline read, quote, Halloween pranks keep police on hop. And the article goes on to say, other young ghosts and goblins employing modern shakedown methods successfully worked the trick-or-treat system in all parts of the cities. So it's always been a fucking racket. <laughs> a sweet, delicious, gooey, nougat-centered racket, and I'm here for it. And so are you, because you're projected to spend $11.6 billion on Halloween this year, $762.8 million of it on some hot, fat pumpkin action. Why pumpkins? That comes from an Irish tradition concerning a guy called Stingy Jack, a.k.a. Drunk Jack, a.k.a. Flacky Jack, a.k.a. Get a job! <laughs> According to the legend, Stingy Jack was this drunk guy that was super good at tricking people. And then one day the devil, yeah, that the devil, 
heard about it and went looking to recruit. He found Jack walking home drunk and was like, hey, can I have your soul? It's really pretty. And Jack was like, oh, I knew today was going to suck. But he was no fool. He was just a dick. Jack convinced the devil to let him have one last drink at the pub. And then, like many of our friends who have done so in the past, convinced the devil to pay for his drink by turning himself into a coin, which Jack pocketed next to his crucifix. And the devil was like, you dick! And Jack managed to add 10 years to his life. Devil was like, fine. And 10 years later, the devil was like, hey, pony up your tender bits. And Jack's like, hey, before I bite it, can I get an apple because I'm hungry? I don't write the legends, okay? <laughs> Just drink your fucking cider. The devil was like, fine. He climbs up a tree. Jack surrounds the base of the tree with crucifixes. And the devil's like, you dick. And Jack's like, okay, I'll let you down, but I don't want to go to hell. That place sucks. Devil's like, fine. And the deal was made. But then Jack died. And when he gets to heaven, God's like, no way you're getting in here, bud. You're a dick. Jack goes to hell. And the devil's like, oh, uh, we made a deal, brah. You said my club sucks. You think that's how you get in the VIP? You think Selena Gomez talks shit about Bootsy Bellows and expects to get past the rope? Entry denied. So Jack can't get bottle service anywhere, and there's no Ubers in the afterlife. Just saying, it's like getting into Midway after 11 p.m. You're walking home, chump. Safe journey. So the devil gave him a hollowed-out turnip to light his way because it's dark out there when you die. And that, kids, is why we drove all the way to Pine Grove to get pumpkins at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. I don't care if you're itchy because bugs. It's tradition. It's the spirit of the screamsin'. And everyone's getting in the spirit. Speaking of spirits, watch out behind you! I'm just kidding. We don't have money in the budget for a jump scare graphic out of nowhere. Who are we, CNN? Haunted houses didn't just pop up shocking the blitzer out of everyone. They've been doing that a long time. 19th century London, if you want to be a Dickopedia about it. 1802, Madame Tussauds Wax Museum scared the British out of people, which is hard to do because they just couldn't possibly. Because she was using death masks. She agreed to make, oh, the victims of the guillotine during the French Revolution to avoid getting the guillotine herself. She would take the heads right out of the basket so you know they're fresh. That's quality. And then she made these wax figures out of them and put them on display in the public in her chamber of horrors. Then came the Grand Guignol Theater in Paris in the 20th century that would recreate famous murders. So you podcast junkies, take note. You can thank the director, Max Moray, next time you binge enough My Favorite Murder to make you nervous about your own bathroom. He famously judged performances by how many people passed out during the show. And then came the Great Depression in America when kids had nothing to do but piss off their neighbors. So said neighbors got together because they had to do something about these kids pissing them off. Groups of families would decorate their basements and hold house-to-house -house parties where they would scare the shit out of these kids to keep them in line. Then came Jerry Falwell and the Hell Houses in Lynchburg, Virginia in the 70s. And if that sentence wasn't terrifying enough at every noun, these were haunted houses with scenes of teens drinking and smoking and making out designed to scare kids into becoming members of the church by showing them the horrifying realities of fun. <laughs> but the haunted house was not a societal jam until 1969, <laughs> nice, when this guy, I don't know if you heard of him, Walt fucking Disney opened the haunted mansion in Disneyland and thus the haunted house you pay 60 bucks to get lunged at by gooey kids was born. Flipping the script started back in the Depression because really this whole time it was about keeping the youth from annoying you. It took them 30 years to figure out, hey, maybe pay them to annoy you and charge admission, capitalizing on the one resource that never depletes, screaming teenagers. <laughs> it's tradition. All in all, it's really all about huddling up close together because it's about to get cold and creepy out. 2,000 years ago, it was because the end of the harvest, right before the cold, killed most of your friends. So no wonder you've been assuming the dead were coming back to look for their keys every October the 31st. The world is terrifying right now, but you can do better in the face of the true nightmares because it's the time when darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand when creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. So give it right back and don't be a baby. You can be scary too. It's in your nature. Happy Halloween, creeps! One more time for Chad Nailed it.